Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rain- Rainy. I should say, good evening. Next to me, as always, Kat Anjala. You don't look like Michael Rainy tonight. Well, it's laundry day. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Makes Dubs, sense. welcome. Chat, welcome. Thank you for being here tonight. I got some bad news right off the bat. What? Jake got diddled again. That's fucking horseshit, dude. I think you did something with him. I did not. Look at you. Look what at did you. you? Do before I got here. You still look more vampiric than I do, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fuck you. All right, I'm going to get some sun as soon as it's not 100,000 degrees outside. But I walked in your place. Your fucking carpet's gone, dude. Yeah. What'd you do to Jake? <laughs> <laughs> what did Jake do to Jake is the better question. But our beloved Jake Matera got diddled again, uh, got caught in a Chick-fil-A trap. I have good intel, so I think we're on the right track in getting him back for next week. You got an inside source at Chick-fil-A? I do, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. This is the same guy you get your sauce from? Same guy. Same. It's a lady, baby. Oh, shit. Yeah. They're really nice employees there. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, there you go. Sorry about that. Oh yeah, if you're not uh if you're not watching this, if you end up listening to this, <laughs> you might want to just look at the YouTube page real quick to see what Mike looks like. All right. Do you want to know why I'm dressed like this? I don't I kind of want it to never be mentioned. All right. And you just play it low key. Okay. All right. We'll flip that coin and let's see what we're dealing with tonight. All right. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you're going to have to. Man, this will be the night for a Practical Jokers episode. That's what I'm kind of hoping. Let's do it. It would be a really, really fun time to win the toss. (laughs) Here we go, baby. I want the Impractical Jokers. Let me have them. One time. You fucking piece of shit. Oh, wait. No, that's the wrong guy. Yeah, what kind of what kind of a uh, victory sound would Doctor Acula make? Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, it's not as uh, fun as a wolf howl. I know. Uh, maybe, you can do maybe a wolf I'm a hybrid. Howl, I'm just doing the mash, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, monster <laughs> mash all over this graveyard smash. Did I ever tell you that lesbians, lesbian monsters, they don't scissor? What do they do? They do the mash. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I don't know how I wasn't expecting that if you just sang it. <laughs> Dude, somebody mentioned it a few weeks ago, but I truly do want to get a dunce cap for this podcast because at some point during each show, one of us deserves to wear it. Oh, yeah. I've sent some of the dumbest fucking things that's ever been spoken in the world on this. I'm asking you this because I do. Do you ever wake up in the middle of the night after recording and, th- and just be jolted awake by something incredibly retarded that you said? No. I'm, I do a pretty good job of forgetting it as soon as I walk out this door. <laughs> I'm like an elephant, baby. Yeah. I shit in the shower and I can never forget. <laughs> Wait, elephants shit in the shower? Where are they showering? Um, elephants outside of Africa. I, give me that dunce cap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome, chat. Oh, man. Oh, count, yeah. Count retard. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to drink your piss. Thank you, Lucas. Oh, man. What a night this is. Damn, I do want to suck your dick, Edward. Yeah, we're doing this live if you're listening later. (laughs) Uh, This is a good reason to be part of the Patreon. You get to be the first one to see this kind of shit. Yeah, this is only for patrons. When we're done recording this, I'm going to take off all the makeup and the costume, and we're going to record it all over again with me just in street clothes. Well, we're going to go to a couple different Wawa's before you get changed. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oh, that's bad news. Gormidius, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Yowzer. <laughs> yeah, we'll try. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to tell me where you live, and I'm going to bite you on the neck so you live forever, my friend. <laughs> All right, John. You ready to hear about tonight's stinker? <sighs> yeah, I'm going to try to listen. <laughs> but I'll you... mostly be looking tonight. All right, good. I know you'd be looking. <laughs> now, when I was reading about this gentleman, some of it was very funny to me, but some of it was so fucked up that I had to go hug my cats. Instead of your family? Was he killing animals? He was. And you're, uh, you know what? I'm going to let you just talk for a while because I don't understand what the fuck we're doing here. (laughs) (laughs) Brother, he was killing cats, birds, rabbits, dogs, you name it. Humans? Yeah, six of them. Okay. Went went on a fucking tear, man. It's not, uh, those aren't low numbers. No, it was within the course of a couple weeks, too. 
All the murders were committed. And what neighborhood of Transylvania did he live in? <laughs> the Sacramento area of Transyl- <laughs> Transylvania. Hell yeah, represent Sac, dude. <laughs> so this gentleman's name is Richard Chase. That doesn't sound like a like a Dracula's name. Dick Chase doesn't sound like Dracula's <laughs> to you? Fuck, how did I not think Dick Chase immediately? The Vampire of Sacramento. What year? A.K.A. the Dracula Killer. Or what decade, rather? Uh, he b- began his murders in 1977. The end huh. of 1977 leading into January of 1978. Okay. And did he wear makeup and shit, or was he just a pale... Dude, he was a fucked up individual. Well, he did have paranoid schizophrenia, which contributed a lot to his behavior. Yeah. All right. Ended up committing six murders, all extremely fucked up. Um, I think his oldest victim was in his 50s and his youngest was 22 months old. Jesus Christ. Yeah, extremely fucked up. Did he get strong from baby's blood? (laughs) Was he doing it to get strong? Yeah. Did he, th- he thought baby's it's cannibal blood? cannibal, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. How the fuck have I never heard of this guy? I don't know, man. You living under a gay-ass rock. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you do with your time. <laughs> that was uncalled for. I'm sorry. I'm just annoyed that Jake's not here. I wish he was here with us, man. But I'm going to try not to be so hurtful to you. I'm sorry. You didn't deserve that. He, so, if I just touch this pillow without looking, I feel like it's him. We should get a Jake-sized body pillow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to remember that for next time he gets kidnapped. All right. So his parents, his dad was a pretty fucked up individual. His name was Richard as well. His mom was named Beatrice. By all accounts, he was a very nice kid. He was a Cub Scout. He played Little League. He was popular. His mom was nuts. All right. Mother was nuts. The dad was an abusive alcoholic. And his sister said that there were many occasions where the dad would throw him across the house and throw him in the walls. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You look Are like you getting you- lost in my eyes right now? <laughs> <laughs> it just there's some some sweat that's happening, and the area around your eyes is growing. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like I might have put all this together last night. I saw Elvis last night. The movie, yeah. So this feels very Elvis like. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of wicked shit you've been he doing? He appeared dude? on my toilet last night. <laughs> it's very unsettling. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I might be taking on the uh, late form Elvis right now. I think after we do this episode, we could just do a quick episode about being a juggalo, and it would you don't have to change anything. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I feel like I look like a juggalo's uncle. <laughs> All right, dude, so his dad would fuck him up. His mom was batshit insane, and you'll enjoy this. He embodied all three elements of the McDonald triad. Do you remember what they are? Um, h- Hang on. Let me come to... Uh, the McDonald's triad? Yeah. Like the restaurant McDonald's? We talking Grimace, Ronald, <laughs> and the motherfucking Hamburg? No, it was like a fucking psychologist that came up with these three elements, which if a child embodies these, all three of these elements together, there's a higher probability of them growing up to become a serial killer. Okay, yeah. Have you ever heard of the Arby's dynamic? Dude, like, what the- <laughs> Of course I'm going to think fucking fast food. <laughs> Do you want to take a guess as to what the uh, the triad uh, was made up of? This is somebody that is a schizo? This is what their shit is? They don't have to be schizophrenic, no. Oh. It could just be somebody who has a higher probability of growing up to become a serial killer. Um, homeschooled? <laughs> Go on. Uh, tethered to the basement? Okay. And uh, named Princess Crawl Daddy. You're close. <laughs> Piss fire and animals. Uh, all right. It's the uh, Boy Scouts Creed. <laughs> yeah. No, but if this is for real, it is for real. What's he do with what's pee pee? Pee right. in the bed? <laughs> <laughs> no, drink it on a podcast, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So listen, we do a lot of piss stuff here. If they're older than five and they're pissing the bed, okay. If they're setting fires as children, that doesn't seem fair. Older than five, uh, yeah. That one, that one is kind of like. I feel like you pee your bed until you're eight years old. Sometimes the other two are nine. much worse. Well, speak for yourself. F- fuck you. I, speak dude, for you too. I, I came out of the womb knowing how to use my dick. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Piss in the bed after well, five. The thing's so small, you didn't take long to figure it out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, setting fires, which he did. I'm, I'm two for two right here. I certainly hope you don't embody this third one, which is torturing animals. No. Good. You're too nice of a guy. Yeah. But, dude, he was fucking animals up. It's so funny. It's like... It is. Lighting shit on fire oh. is, like, kind of an av... Like, not unheard of thing to do right. with a child. Peeing the bed until after five seems like a lot of people are eligible for that. But, like... Oh, and the third one, which could be the only one, mm. torturing animals. Like, do we need anything besides that? <laughs> Wait, well, he did rip the head off multiple neighborhood cats, but has he pissed his bed since he was four? Well, then he can't be a serial killer. Uh, dude, uh, you're going to hate this, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he started murdering so many cats around the neighborhood that it became, it became a common um, neighborhood um, conversation starter. For people to ask one another, like, yo, have you seen my fucking cat? Yeah. Like, this happened so often that so many cats were disappearing. People stopped letting them out. The whole neighborhood started talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he was convinced that he was also a part of something called the James Younger Gang. Did you ever hear of them? No. Uh, It's from the 1800s. It was a a gang led by Jesse James. Okay. And he swore that he was part of this gang. Now, when you're that young, it seems like something kind of cool that you might just imagine. That's like cowboys and Indians shit. You just... Walk around pretending all day. He could be. But, he, dude, he had a, yeah, this is kind of funny. He had a poster made up, and he glued a picture of himself onto the poster to be a part of the gang. I like that. It's kind of cute. Yeah. How old was he when he was murdering neighborhood cats? Ooh, I would say by the age of 10. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. And he was pretending that he was part of this gang. Mm-hmm. It could just be gang shit. Yeah, that is gang gang for real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll enjoy this, too. So as he grew... Into being a teenager, what uh, one of the things that he used to do that really started raising some red flags amongst, amongst his family members was he would wake up in the middle of the night, crank the thermostat up to ninety degrees, take all of his clothes off, and sleep on the couch. <laughs> yeah, that's the man of the house right there. <laughs> <laughs> Why do thermostats go up to ninety degrees, dude? What the fuck is that even? In for? case you got a hot boy in the house. <laughs> That's hot boy shit. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Damn, all right. This kid is different. Dude, could you imagine waking up fucking sweltering and coming downstairs and seeing your brother rock hard on the couch naked? <laughs> Just stuck to a leather couch. <laughs> get my mom, get my mom. <laughs> oh, dude, I felt really bad when I read this, man. One of the strikes against him is even as a teenager, you're going to want to hold my hand for this one, John. He was impotent. That seems like it should be, instead of pissing your pants after five, that should be part of the triad. It's not common, though. Your dick don't work. (laughs) You're fucking lighting ants on fire with a magnifying glass. You sound like his high school guidance counselor right now. (laughs) Just be aware of that. (laughs) Look, you ain't going to college, man. Your dick don't work. What are you even going to do when you get there? This is the first time that I that I heard about this. I've never heard of a teenager who ended up becoming a serial killer not being able to get an erection. Yeah, I don't think I've heard of it. Truly insane. Man. Now, he was into girls, and girls were into him, but he couldn't really Torture. press the limit too hard. Uh, my God. He, That's the like, real vampire's curse. So he would get to the like, round third base and wouldn't have an erection? He'd get the stop sign, yeah. Damn. So I'm sure that was a major contributing factor because by the time he was 18, his hygiene had gotten so bad that that's what he became known for. Being a stinky little he was a cat killer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a true stinker. Wow. He is. It's yeah. rare that we get somebody that actually body stinks. In mind, body, and spirit. He is a stinker, yeah. <laughs> Who was the stinky kid in your school? You want to say his name? Um, Full name? <laughs> address? <laughs> Occupation. Out of like the friends that we hung out with, I guess our our buddy Francis took a while to figure out deodorant. Oh no. Yeah. You know how like somebody that you think stinks? Yeah. You like go to their house and it's like, oh, the whole, this is like the family scent. Yeah. You know? Like this is just the aroma of the house. It's the (laughs) Redenbachers. Chat, uh, if you want to hit us up with who your stinky kid was in school, 
Uh, yeah. Let us know what they smelled like, looked like, tasted like, and felt like. Yeah, dox your high school stinkies. Dude, this kid, this is one of my own sites. This fucking kid, I, I'm going to give his full name. Uh, don't. We're live. I don't care. We can't edit it out. I hate this fucker. <laughs> it doesn't mean you should say I, his name. Fred Natal. I hate Fred Natal. <laughs> he was the fucking worst. This fat fucking pig, Fred Natal, was a teenage grease monkey. came to school every day with fucking dirty mechanic hands at the age of fucking 16. And he looked like, remember Mercer Mayer's Critters? No. He looked like one of Mercer Mayer's Critters if their mom drank while she was pregnant. This fucker used to sit behind me, and this is one of my biggest regrets. He gave me a wet willy in English class. And your regret was not beating the him? shit out of him, yeah. With dirty mechanic hands. Right then and there? Yeah. Would he have whipped your ass? He was a fatso. Probably you think dead one in the now. face would have made him cry, though? Would have stopped. Because nobody yeah. ever did it. Yeah, he would have stopped. Man, I'm sorry that you didn't get to live that out. I'm Does sorry. he live around here, though? We can go fuck him up tonight. Probably. And no, you know what? I will say this. He seems like somebody who probably died before he hit 30. I was going to say, if he had dirty hands in six, at 16, he didn't leave the, uh, the county Bro, after college. We got some funny stinkies in the chat. So Taylor says, Bert Meester stunk like nine day old pussy soaked in formaldehyde. <laughs> Why is English class smell like the science lab? <laughs> uh, it was me. I pissed my pants almost daily. I also pissed your pants. <laughs> so that guy actually was a big, fat, stinky guy with dirty hands. With a mullet. Damn. I kind of like this guy. Uh, no. Did you ever see him again after high school? No. Actually, he was gone by, I think, senior year. What happened to him? I think his family just couldn't afford a tuition anymore. <laughs> Wait, that was Catholic high school? Business, working overtime. Yeah, they needed an Nobody's working overtime hands. in that house. It broke bitches. <laughs> yeah, I'm willing to bet that's what it, what it was. That was Catholic school? Yeah. I only went to Catholic school. Yeah, okay. So, I'm yeah. private stock, baby. Same, bro. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make any sense. It's so expensive. I know. Dude, it's we didn't have shit it. when we were kids. And my parents spent every extra penny on our schooling. Yeah. Which was it like, what was the reason to not get beat up? Dude, like, I don't know. Like, I think that was the reason, like the thought process for my parents, like, oh, public school is like dangerous. And this little kid's going to get his ass whipped. Brother, I don't think it was any more dangerous than fucking Catholic school. Yeah. Yeah. Fights happen every day at Catholic yeah. school. So um, I don't. I don't fucking know. Like, I, I almost wish I could go back in time and give my parents some hedonism money. <laughs> they would have definitely went there. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't think they directly told me this. I think I overheard my mom telling an aunt at a dining room conversation where she told her that my dad was taking her to a place called Into the Dove. Uh, yeah, I know about that. I see the billboard it's for that It's a gross place. fuck hotel. Yeah. For like the weekend? Yeah. Did you know what it was when you overheard the conversation? No, I, the name just stuck with me because it was so odd because it wasn't so like holiday. So years Inter later Ramada. you saw like... A commercial for it and it clicked like yeah it's like in northeast philly or something yeah but like you, you went back in time and you're like oh my god i remember my mom saying yep. she went there with my dad yeah they were gross dude well they that's good are. that's healthy it's not good i hate them <laughs> <laughs> i used to hear them bang all the time it was the worst all right let's get back to this fucking cat killing <laughs> <sticky guy. laughs> all right dude so he he graduated high school like he got terrible grades, but he just seemed like one of those kids that they wanted to get the fuck out of there. Mm. They end up passing him, and uh, his parents get him a car as a graduation present, and he ends up enrolling in a place called American River College, and he ends up getting a job as a typist. Uh, that rules. It is kind of cool. He's is trying. That, is that in Sacramento? I don't know. I think the American River runs right through Sacramento. It's fed from the Sierra Nevada. Oh, buddy, that sounds like a Bruce Springsteen song. Sacramento is like a gateway city to the Sierra Nevada. Like oh, wow. Clear days cool. you can see to the mountains. Okay. It's cooler than... But I doubt this fucking stinky piece of shit ever went to the fucking yeah. mountains with his family. Only thing I... I think Deftones are from there. From Sacramento? Yeah. And Corn's from Bakersfield, baby. Not the Central far, Valley, baby. really. Oh, uh, my God, man. That's your home. I gotta that's make the pilgrimage. Home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the pilgrimage to Bakersfield in Sacramento. <laughs> What's next? We're going to hit Fresno, too? <laughs> <laughs> so dude one day this is where shit really fucking kicks into high gear for you thought the cat killer was kicking him into high gear sorry buddy that's not where it starts 
He's hanging out on a random stoop, and two, at least one former classmate, there were two girls that walked past him, and one of them recognizes him and says, hi, Richard, do you remember me? And he's like, oh, yeah, I remember we went to high school together. And they're chatting it up, and they're asking him what he's up to, and he's like, yeah, things aren't going too hot. I'm kind of, you know, my parents aren't wild about me living at home. And they're like, well, we're actually looking for a third roommate. So Fucking they in jackpot, dude. Yeah, dude. They invite him to come live with them. They quickly regret. He couldn't it. have stunk that bad in high school. I, well, listen. When you see him, like he, he's handsome enough as to where you'd get a second job before you invited the stinky kid to live with you after <laughs> high school. <laughs> <laughs> but bear in mind, this is the late sixties, so everybody likes everybody. And true, I feel like there was a lot of stinky dudes rolling around back then. Yeah, yeah. Stink, stink was the norm back then. Yeah. So they get him as the third roommate, and quickly they regret it. All right, so he moves in. He stinks. He's always walking around the, the apartment naked, he, especially when they have company over. Whoa. He'll All just right. walk through naked. So That's you know he's got a hammer. Dude. Yeah, I mean, but it's like, why are you even showing that thing off? It don't get hard, bro. Oh, man. You know? That never occurred to me, John. Oh, my God. But I can see I can kind of see the logic of like that's kind of like the home alone trick remember when macaulay culkin had the cutout of the guy yelling yeah like i'm gonna give it to the count of 10 uh-huh. it's like you're just giving the impression that a more virile man is there right yeah yeah so that maybe that's it was kind of like overcompensating yeah. for it's like a not, scarecrow yeah <laughs> you know why he's a scarecrow why because he's outstanding in his field uh, <laughs> Boom, go buck buck in the chat if you like that little saying Dude, what would you call him, a Franklin Slammer? <laughs> oh yeah Yeah, bring back Franklin Slammer a Franklin, Franklin Slammer, Slammer, dude Go Franklin <laughs> Slammer, buck buck in the chat <laughs> Um, Damn, dude Alright, so yeah, super weird to be Like, hey, yeah, come live with us Then you're having friends over Dude walks around naked Is he doing any, like, is he fucking nailing dead cats to the wall and shit not there but he does do some weird shit so aside from the walking around naked he gets a gun and he can be seen just waving it out his window at passersby jesus christ that's kind of funny it is yeah (laughs) kind of the man (laughs) just don't kill cats man but dude eventually the chicks get tired of it however one of the girls who moves out her brother moves in so he's brought in to kind of like keep him in check yeah and he yeah, does kind bring of bring in a wrangler. But dude, wait do you get this. He's in a band and his band practices at the apartment. Mm-hmm. So Richard just decides that he's in the band now. What's and he while doing? The band, he brings his bongos out into the living room and starts playing along with them whenever they're there. Wow. This guy really does have a fucking <laughs> set of balls on him. Well, when you got a dick that don't work, you need a set of balls to work. <laughs> but dude, eventually he gets tired of his shit. And he goes back to live with his parents. When he goes back to his Who parents, does? Richard, Richard Chase. Okay. Yeah. And when he lives back with the parents, dude, he decorates his walls with cut out pictures of the human heart all over the walls. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. I don't think this you kid's like going to be a doctor. Oh, John. What? I don't, I don't know. You had such high hopes for him a minute ago. Yeah. Is he doing it just in his bedroom? Yeah. Does he keep it fucking locked Ray Finkel style? <laughs> Like, do his parents not see the hearts on the wall for a couple months, and then they're like, Jesus Christ, what is this kid? They would actually tease him when he walked past. They'd be like, Ray Stinkle looking ass. <laughs> Dude, uh, eventually they get tired of his shit, too, because he's fucking wilding out at home. So his mom sends him to live with his grandmother, and he gets a job when he lives with his grandma. What do you think he does for money? He's not typing anymore. Mm-mm. Um, some kind of a uh, warehouse worker. Nope. Uh, male prostitute. Nope. One more guess. Massage artist. Nope. A special needs bus driver. Okay, got a CDL. Good for him. <laughs> You're really impressed by this guy. I'm surprised, man. <laughs> I mean, so far he's only killed a couple cats, and that was eight years ago. Uh huh. Is there anything, any record of him like doing animals throughout his teens? Killing animals. Yeah, dude, wait till you hear the rest of this. All right. This, this is this has never stopped. Yeah. Okay. So somebody mentioned in the chat, and I and I have a feeling this is probably why he was brought into the apartment as opposed to just being brought in by the kindness of their hearts. They said that he had a an acid connect for them. 
That would make sense. Right on. All right. That he never came through with. He might have. Dude. Well, I know he was heavy in the acid. He was heavy in the weed and amphetamines. <sighs> Look, I've rocked. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> he can do no wrong by you. <laughs> Richard Chase might be your guy. Up until he fucking kills a 22-month-old child, I, I'm with him. What, what would you do when I told you that he killed a 22-month-old cat? Or 22-month... Yeah, that's what I said. 22-month-old cat? Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably past the cusp of where a kitten becomes a cat. Bad, yeah. And that is also the exact moment where I stop caring about that animal. <laughs> <laughs> I love kittens. I don't like cats. Buddy, let me... Oh, I was just about to bring that up because we found out a few weeks ago that you don't view English babies in the same light as you do American babies. That was just to get me through that night so I didn't feel uh, okay. terrible in the Is moment. this getting you through this night talking about hating cats? Um, when I got two beautiful babies in the next room? They were beautiful <gasps> until they got big. But now they're just big-ass cats, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! That was truly scary. Dude, you're... Doesn't Nosferatu do that shit, too? He does. Whoa! You're bringing that. Don't, don't uh, do it I don't again. I don't want that to ever happen again. <laughs> don't do it again. Did you practice that? I did not. That came out. That's natural. First try. That is natural. That was dude. That right. is centuries. I'm not fucking with your babies, dude. That is centuries of aggression coming out. I would never kill them. I'm just not gonna pet them. All right. I'm not asking you to. <laughs> uh, dude. The For the one- record, you did ask me to pet your cats when I got here. Don't fucking believe his shit. Well, the one did have a uh, my one cat, big boy. He's had a rough two weeks. We had to take him to the vet twice. Oh, yeah. See, you said he was uh, yeah. scared of like his own shadow or something last week. <laughs> <laughs> a new squirrel barked in the tree back there. And, uh... yeah. yeah, dude. We took him back the second time because uh, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't going to the bathroom. And then he was like trying to like getting down into like pissing position. And not peeing. And like he came back here and he tried to pee back here. But and couldn't? No, he couldn't, pee. he couldn't him. be. And, yeah. and when they can't pee, it's a sign that you know something's usually seriously wrong. Yeah. So we uh, we took him in twice, and the first Fixed time he had a UTI. Okay. So he probably got fingered out in the streets. He goes outside and no, gets fingered. I'm, I'm teasing. <laughs> but uh, the more likely scenario is because yesterday he didn't have any kind of infection. Is that it's something called cystitis, which is oftentimes brought on by stress. So I got to get him little CBD droplets. For and, real? Uh, yeah, and I got to make the place... Oh, we used very, to give that to our dog, yeah. I got to make the place as chill as possible for him. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Very zen. Yeah, I am. You're going to get a uh, little zen Dress garden. up like Dracula for <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poor yeah, thing's I trying to curl up out there. feeling pretty good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what a horror show, man. Dude, I, I, was, I had all this shit on. I was looking in the mirror, and then my son came out of his room and, <laughs> and looked in at me. I would almost rather... Him walk in on me, cutting the cat's head off. <laughs> what was the look he gave you when he saw you? He was terrified. Really, I, dude? And I scared the shit out of him last week with the monkey mask. <laughs> My God, just <laughs> torture to live in this house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny to say how distressed your cat is in that makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, chat. Uh, yeah, his uh, his bladder was inflamed, so we're giving him two types of medication for it now. So I'm hoping this clears it up. If it doesn't, we got to take his little ass back. And we do have to put him on a diet, too. Because they say that could be contributing to some health problems right now. What do you mean? What kind of food does he usually get? Uh, fucking KFC. What do you think he eats? Is it wet or dry, piece of shit? Both. And do treats. Wet and dry both in the same yeah. day? Yeah. Was dry is like uh, the wet food, like dinner, like a treat. No, just uh, the dry food is more of just like a uh, an all day thing. Okay, so what will the cat's diet consist of, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, just better cat food, dude. Okay, yeah, it sounds like this fucking doctor works for the cat food company that <laughs> costs five dollars more a bag than what you're buying now. Uh, all right, Jake, that's that's not very nice. I'm so man. <laughs> Jake told me I need to go on a diet, too. That's fucked up. You look great. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. <laughs> but, yeah, this motherfucker, man. So he goes back to he goes to live with his grandmom. And he in 1973, he's hospitalized for, for mental issues. Actually, no, he goes to a regular hospital first. He's complaining because 
he always feels as though he doesn't have enough blood in his body. He feels like that's at the root of all of his issues, including and especially his impotence. All right. So he's thinking... I'm he, with him on that a little bit, but has that ever been a real condition? That no. someone lacks a sufficient amount of blood in their body? No. Dude, yeah. he might be your Casey Anthony. Yeah, don't... He's your bad figure. bitch. Is he good looking? He is pretty handsome. I'm going to go... Is he alive? No. Fuck. Oh, I'm so sorry, John. Heartbroken instantly. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's all right. All right. But he is a handsome guy. He's I'll just be slightly despondent for the rest of this episode. <laughs> Dude, he tells the doctor when he goes to the hospital that uh, he believes his issue is a stolen pulmonary artery. Someone like cut stolen. it out of him. Yeah. He just doesn't have it now, and that's why he's lost so much blood. And there's no scar. No. He's got no basis for this. No. Are they doing, like, to. CAT scans, MRAs back then to, like, prove this guy? Like, you're all here. Except up here. Uh, yeah, dude, I can't imagine they put him through the machine. I, yeah, I can't imagine a doctor's like, oh, no, let me do this $1,000 process to explain to you mm-hmm. why you aren't uh, <laughs> magically missing a fucking artery. All right, so this guy is um, getting dumb, it sounds like, and a little bit out there. Oh, uh, buddy, where do you get this? So eventually he ends up getting his own apartment, Okay. So after he goes to the hospital complaining of a stolen pulmonary artery, he gets his own apartment. Unfortunately, this apartment is located near a rabbit farm. Oh, no. Yeah, so he's going to the rabbit farm pretty often. And he, I, I don't think he's, uh, he's petting those bunnies. He's not. You want to hear what he would do to him? Uh, not really. I doubt he was uh, hugging him so hard that he was Lenny from... Of mice and menning them. No, and I just want to tell you guys, if you got bunny sensitivity issues, right now is the time you're going to fast forward a minute to go in the toilet and take a screaming cheer because <laughs> you're going to hate this. <laughs> oh, dude, I don't know how do people you... decompress? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he, he ready? He does. He doesn't use guns. It seems like yet. Is he using? He's yet. not. I mean, shooting these rabbits wouldn't be that gross. So I don't think it's guns. So he's like slitting their throats, cutting their legs off, buddy. So he's holding these rabbits down on the table and he's biting into their abdomens. You okay. still like him? Slightly less than I just did. He would bite into their abdomens and drink Li- their oh. blood. Oh my god! How did he not die from this? Well, he gets pretty sick eventually. But I want to tell you one other fucked up thing he did with these rabbits before I tell you about. Why he gets really sick. Even though you're wearing Dracula makeup, I don't know why I didn't think that he would bite into these living animals. That was like my hundredth guess. <laughs> Dude, so not only would he bite the bellies of these poor rabbits and suck the blood out of them, he would then take their dead bodies, put them in a blender, put their tender hearts in a blender, all right? And mix it with Coca-Cola. And then throw it away. And then drink it. No. Yeah. Fuck, That's dude. how Nitro Pepsi's made. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is he skinning them? No. I, he's drinking the whole thing. Dog, his whole thing, whether it's animals or people, is biting into them, drinking the blood, and then smearing blood all over himself. What age is he at this point? Mid twenties, this was yeah mid twenties. Yep, and he's living by himself, so nobody finds out about this behavior until his dad checks on him pretty often, and that's why he ends up eventually getting committed to a psych hospital. So one day the dad comes over, he checks on him, and he walks in the house, and there's there's puddles of vomit all over the apartment. So he eventually finds Richard fucking sitting by himself and like he's still alive, but he's clearly very fucking sick. Yeah. And he won't tell him what's wrong. But eventually when they get to the hospital, he admits that he was injecting rabbit blood into his own body. Is that a cover for him really eating and drinking blood or is well, that? Yeah, he was doing that, making his Coke rabbit smoothies. Was he? Uh, did he admit to that? Or I don't he, know if he admitted to that, but he did admit to, in, like... Do you think that's true? That wasn't a cover-up? Oh, I think that's definitely okay. true. 
And that's part of him. He's injecting more blood into his bloodstream. Yeah. Animal blood. Rabbit blood. You know how fast that makes you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, rabbits fuck, so maybe he's trying to get his wiener hard. Oh, maybe I'll do that. Like, I'm going to surprise my wife with blue chew and rabbit blood. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully that makeup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, babe, you're so hot. Just imagine me smearing all this white makeup all over her face. <laughs> that's all I say during sex. Oh, babe, you're so hot. <laughs> Mike, stop. You're making me horny. <laughs> what do you say during sex? Not a single fucking word. Oh, come on. You got to say something. No. I know you. You say something very chill. I can tell. <laughs> what do you think I say? What's chill to say? You say, damn, baby, this pussy is down, down. <laughs> <laughs> you hit her with a 311? That sounds like I'm fucking a retarded lady. Well. Baby, because your pussy is downs, downs. <laughs> And if I ever really did fuck you, you, then I'd go to jail. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Downs is the color of your syndrome. Whoa. John, what's happening right now? I don't know. Jake put the, a spell on us. <laughs> yeah. The trouble is that we can't edit this because it's live. <laughs> Oh, baby. Yeah, so he eventually goes to the psych ward in 1976, and he's diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic at that point. Okay. And while he's there, he's nicknamed by staff and other patients as Dracula. For real? Yep. Just from the rabbit yep. incident? Yep. This was a, a place called Beverly Manor. In Sacramento? Uh, around that area. Okay. But huh. dude, get this. While he's in Beverly Manor, he starts doing some wild shit. How do you think he earns the nickname Dracula? And it's not just word of mouth. He's actively doing shit there, which earns him that nickname. Uh, uh, is he killing other animals? What are you laughing at? Uh, Jake Papp said, Count Retard Dumbfuck is replacing him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, was he stealing patients' blood? No. What could, what could he have been doing? Buddy, he was collecting birds. Oh, my God. All right? And he was biting their heads off. And then they, what, let him out? How did he start murdering humans after this? Eventually they let him out because, like, you can't, you can't just... Is it only, like, a 60-day hold thing Probably, you go yeah. through? And his parents at this point, like, even though he was an adult, his parents had a conservatorship. Uh-huh. So, much like Britney Spears. Yeah, so I was going to say, yeah. was she biting the heads off bats as well? Probably. But eventually the parents are just like, all right, fuck this. This is too much for us to do. And at that point, once he's free, he starts traveling the country. Do you have, uh, do you take issue with Ozzy Osbourne? Uh, biting the head off a bat since you're dressed like this and no 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 but don't you turn into a bat aren't bats your brethren technically brother I'm, I'm the chillest Dracula you ever met that's fucking chill bro mm -hmm. will you dress like that to go to Ozfest I'm going like this to family court tomorrow brother <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my kids back <laughs> only on nights <laughs> Oh, buddy. So he starts traveling, and he gets heavy into Nazis and UFOs. Hmm. One of those things is cool to get into. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there a conspiracy re like that relates these two things? Are they related at all, or is it just like two separate interests that he? All right. So gets? he thinks that he was born Jewish, and that I think Nazis were sending UFOs after him. This guy really couldn't figure out his thing. No, at first it was not enough blood. Now it's fucking. This is like a teenager UFO going Nazis. goth and having a wigger phase, getting a skateboarder for a couple years. Yeah, who just knocked that down? Yeah, Jake the Spirit. Yeah, Jake? a bunch of shit just flew off my shelf. You did something to Jake. I know it. I Where'd didn't. you put him? I didn't. Where am I going to put him? That's what I want to know. That's what me and the chat and the police who are on their way and keep texting me want to know. You can look under my bed. You can check my crawl space. You can check my sex swing. I don't think I have to look under your bed. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can skip that one. <laughs> uh, someday I'm going to make you look under there. <laughs> oh, buddy. So something especially fucked up happens. Uh, he ends up... All right. So he fucking... His mental illness is just skyrocketing at this point, and he's ramping up his animal killing. He's got... Is he living in alone again? 
I think he's back with his parents. Now, he's, he ends up going back and forth between his parents and, and his grandma's house and a bunch. Yeah, my mom. And uh, he, during this time, he kills both family dogs. Oh, Jesus, man. He kills both family dogs, and his reasoning was that they belong to him so he could do what he wants with them. <sighs> and that dude, makes sense. Way to get a load of this. <laughs> he ends up shooting his mother's cat. Somebody said John check his ass before you even farted. Whoa, Jake. Are they in the future? Sorry, what yeah, did you Jake say? Yeah, Jake Pappas is on it tonight. All right, dude. What about his... Uh... Oh, he's shooting cats. All right. He's back to like fucking with cats in the neighborhood. As far as his mom's cat, he brings his mom's cat up on the porch, and he calls his mom out to the porch, and he bites into the cat like he used to bite into rabbits when he had his apartment, right in front of his mom. Living. Yes. And I'm going to venture to guess it's not living anymore. No. <laughs> Gee, all right. So after that, it's like... He took all nine of this cat's lives <laughs> that day. With one, with one chomp. <laughs> uh, at that point, isn't that like you you can go to jail? If she reported him, yeah. It was up to her to have to... Yeah. Killed two fucking dogs and the family cat. Yeah. It's like he's running out of fucking animals. He's coming for humans soon. So she's 92, so I think that plays into yeah. her. And plus, it's his mom, so... If your kid killed your cat in front of you, what would you do? Would you call the cops like a fucking bitch? Yeah, I'd wrap my cat out, my, my kid out for way less than that. <laughs> get him out of the house, man. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, man. You I just want get my, like, pl- my space back, dude. Like a, like a month juvie break? Yeah. Yeah, nice. I'll, I'll start killing some animals, mm-hmm. blaming on the kid. <laughs> who, the, who are the cops gonna believe? <laughs> Me and this fucking kid. What's the worst trouble you got in as a kid? Um, I got caught uh, chewing dip at recess in seventh grade. You bad boy. And had to do two weeks of in school detention, or like oh. it was like special That's ISS, detention. baby. Was that where like you're separated from the rest of the detention mm-hmm. people? Yeah, I don't even think that was a thing. They were just like, this, we can't get a normal. Well, it's like you could either do an after school suspension or after school detention or in school suspension or out of school suspension. I didn't get suspended, but I had two weeks of maybe like, maybe like I I couldn't eat lunch. Okay. Like I had to go eat lunch in like detention or whatever. But I think that's the worst trouble I got in. Damn. Were all your boys writing like messages of encouragement for you on MySpace? (laughs) No. That was. Not around yet. <laughs> when did you graduate? I was in seventh grade when this happened. Oh. That was 1998. Uh, no, you, yeah. You could get, have the internet. I remember using the internet back in like 1995. <laughs> yeah, sure. It was around. I didn't have it in my house, though. Oh, I'm sorry, man. We were chewing dip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. So, all right. So he gets an apartment and he another apartment. He's terrifying people around this fucking apartment apartment complex. And one of the things that he does is he'll walk around the complex acting like a zombie. Funny. Very funny. Yeah. Another thing he does is he'll walk around carrying his rifle. Not as funny. <laughs> All right. Now he gets in a little bit of trouble for that. So much so the people complain to the manager. What do you think the manager's solution is to that? <laughs> Get rid of the lights in the parking lot. He makes him put a blanket over the gun. But he can still carry it around? He can still carry it around. What do you think is under that blanket? <laughs> I have no idea. But it's long. <laughs> Dude, the zombie thing would be funny until the one time he catches a rabbit mm. and you start to see him eating the fucking live animal and you're like, holy shit, this is a real zombie. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta kill this guy in the head. The meowing dead. <laughs> Oh, dude, so at this point, he's full on psychosis. He's fucking buying up pets. Anytime he sees a, uh, a, an ad selling a fucking dog or a puppy or kittens, he's buying them. All right, so he's taking them back to his apartment and he's killing them. And he's drinking the blood. Yep. Making the smoothie. Mm-hmm. And thinks that he is mm-hmm. <laughs> making himself better. Yep. Meanwhile, he's vomiting all over the house like a sick cat. Mm-hmm. I can't believe he lived that long after ingesting that much fucking raw animal. That's the power of the human spirit. (laughs) Yeah, he really wanted it. He really wanted to 
be undead. What is Dracula? Technically, he's I undead. Guess vampires are undead. I mean, I'm undead. Yes. Good save. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'm so tired. I can't wait to sleep upside down the night. <laughs> <laughs> man, so hard being Dracul. <laughs> um, so he's buying <laughs> he's buying dogs up, and it's not working out too well for these poor animals, dude. I mean, he's he must have killed a hundred fucking animals at this point, right? I wouldn't doubt it, man. The bunny farm had to be double digits at least. That Probably had to have like, made him hard, like. Yeah, is maybe he still not getting hard? Maybe, uh, I don't know. I think eventually he picks it up because... <laughs> if he figures it out. Does now, this mean that he's never even masturbated? Oh, you can masturbate without it being hard, baby. I wrote sure. the book on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I have read the soft cum book many times. <laughs> it's one of my favorite works by you. Uh, uh, you want me to autograph it? <laughs> <laughs> With what? Um, is he... Yeah, so you can soft come. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he is he not even waking up with a bone or ever. I don't know, man. I wish he was alive so we could ask him. I know there was actually um, one of the 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 fucking uh, mine hunter guys. They interviewed him. Oh, really? Uh, Robert Ressler was one of them. Who he ended up he wrote a book that I read um, his his interview with him in. It was called Whoever Fights Monsters. So that was in the last decade, right? No, this he interviewed him in like. The late 70s, like 79. Oh, Mindhunter is just a TV show that happened now. Right, yeah. Based on this yeah. guy's work. Mm-hmm. Okay. And part of the interview is especially funny because he shows up with a red Solo cup full of mac and cheese to present to him. And then he also warns him of uh, dish, dish soap poisoning. Yeah, that's what you have to or worry about. Or soap dish poisoning. It's called soap dish poisoning. What's so what that? it is, he says, um, if... You lift up your bar of soap and look under there, and the dish is clear. Like there's no gooey stuff under there, you're good. But if there's gooey shit under the soap, you're probably suffering from soap dish poisoning. You make this up? Did I make it up? Did he? He made it up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know why you would have made it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's years after. He hasn't even fucking gotten arrested yet, though, in real time. As we're no, going. he hasn't. Yeah. Now, this is Christmas of 1977. He reconnects with some of his family. His mom takes him out for, like, Christmas Eve dinner. He checks in with his mom. mom. His mom even gives him 10 bucks, which is very sweet to give your crazy 27-year-old grandson. Don't spend it blood, all in one pet down store. Down sweater. <laughs> Oh, man, could you imagine a, a turtle around this poor thing? Oh, my God. At least that thing's got more defense. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, if I was a turtle, you, can you imagine the things I would yell outside of that show? <laughs> <laughs> Probably some anti-Romanian kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's your second strike. Wait, is Dracula technically Romanian? Transylvanian. Okay, dude. I um, I truly have Romanian blood in me. I hope not from an animal. What part of your family is Romanian? You're very close to getting your third hiss. <laughs> My mother. She's ha- and how how much Romanian is she? <laughs> <laughs> She's so Romanian. Does she have like a parent that was from there or Did grandparents? If you sent her through a cold winter, she would make boot stew. <laughs> I don't fucking know. 10, 5, 10, 20% Romanian? Fine. You could have just left this out. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Danny, can you pull up uh, Ancestry.com and see <laughs> how much Romanian my mother is? Can you spit in my hand? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, fuck it. We'll just go to the end of the dove and ask her ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, in uh, on Christmas Eve, 1977, things are going kind of well for him. He's reconnecting with family. Things are going pretty well. He's got 10 bucks from his grandma. And they're like, they see him, they take him out to eat in the community, and they feel bad. They're like, you know what, maybe we should bring him home for Christmas dinner. Take him out to eat in the community? What does that mean? Like He's not let- welcome at home. He was wild enough at home as to where the family decided he, he shouldn't come back. They can, But they're meeting up on neutral territory. They are. Yeah. The mom and the grandmom want to bring him home, 
But his sister Pamela, when they run up by her, she says, absolutely not. Just for the night? Just for Christmas? Just for Christmas yeah. dinner. She says, absolutely not. And that sends him off the fucking edge. December 29th is when he commits his first murder. It's a uh, drive-by shooting. Really? Yeah. He ends up using a fucking gun. Now, he said, I, I believe it was in that interview with Robert Ressler where he says he didn't intend to kill the guy. Like, he knew he was shooting the guy. He was driving in a car, driving by a person yes. that was walking on foot. Dude, it was just a guy who had just gotten home from with his wife, and they were taking stuff out of the car. And Jesus. he shot the guy and killed him. And he didn't get caught? No, not that night. All this, So that's the first of his six murders. Like All this happens within a few weeks span. You said everything happened in 77? Or, uh, well, no, it, it starts December, December 29th, 77, into the, and into January of 78. Okay. Man. Jesus Christ. You could have just fucking taken him home, let him unwrap some presents, and there'd still be six people yeah, that's left. All it took. I mean, would it have killed you to give him a little puppy with a bow around its neck? Though, if he did go home, maybe he would have killed one of his family members. You know? Yeah. Who doesn't want to, though? Better than them, than us. No. That's crazy. This I'm starting to think this guy's a little loopy. He is getting there. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, uh, three weeks later, he commits a second murder. All right? This is, dude, this is fucking nuts. Now, this... He breaks into his house, and his feeling was that he would try to break into homes, and he says if the door was unlocked, that was an invitation for him to come in. If it was locked, it was he wasn't meant to go in there. So these people that were just fortunate enough to leave their fucking doors locked while he was prowling probably have no idea how lucky they were. I can't ever imagine a time when you would leave your door unlocked, <clears throat> no matter where you lived. Oh, I do now. Not often, but yeah. there are times where. I mean, yeah, not where I live right now. Mm -hmm. I would probably do it around here, but not. Mm -hmm. Too many fucking, too many people chasing my lady with a pipe <laughs> to the front door. <laughs> you ain't the only one chasing her with a pipe? Yeah, right? <laughs> There's a fucking heroin addict, <laughs> fat bitch fucking locals. Oh. I'm going to find you, bitch. We had a crackhead a uh, roaming around out here recently. Through the neighborhood or like by the park? Uh, dude, I saw her two weeks ago. She was suntanning at 6.30 a.m. in the park. Up early? Yeah, she was. Go and get her. I saw her. I was leaving for work. I was like, all right, that's definitely cracky, but God bless her. She was taking selfies. The sun right. was barely fucking Where out. Where the fuck did she charge her phone? <laughs> How the fuck is a crackhead that dude, much more productive than me? Dude, like 10 days later in this... Uh, this Facebook group about my neighborhood, this lady posted these, this, these pictures of her. She was walking up and down the street here, taking pictures of cars and taking pictures of houses. Oh, no. Yeah. So clearly up to no good. Yeah, that's like on site. Like, I'm going to fucking knock you out if you don't get out of here. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to hit a woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, How hard would you hit a crackhead? Oh, my, I, I was I would have fucking... Beat this lady's head in with her pipe. All right, cool. Yeah. Without a doubt. She chased my fucking girlfriend to that house. Oh, back there. Oh, I'm sorry. For I like a block. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, and Maggie was like, don't go out there. She's like, she's got a fucking pipe. She wouldn't, like, she guarded the door to not let me out. Was she waiting? Out? I would have gone out there, fucking took the hit with the pipe, got it out of her hand, and killed a woman. Oh, my God, John. I'm protecting my family. Oh, my God. Dude, if you got... That's the time. That's the one time you can hit a woman when she's chasing your wife with a fucking pipe high on PCP. Oh my God. John, if you got killed by a crackhead, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could do this podcast again. A lady crackhead? <laughs> she, was a, she was a big bitch, too. Uh, buck Buck in the chat if you want to see John get killed by a lady crackhead. <laughs> Yo, I didn't really get a good look at this lady. But when Maggie called the cops, she gave the description. She was like, 5'7", 250. I was like, damn, maybe she would have taken me. Wow, man. What's the biggest lady you think could stop you? I mean, it doesn't even really matter the size. I'm sure that a lot of women are much stronger than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My wife used to be a lot stronger than I was. 
Yeah. It was it was humiliating. I think my girlfriend probably is technically stronger than me. <laughs> what amount could I give you to set up a wrestling match between you and your wife? I'd do it for a couple grand. Okay. Could we do it live on the Patreon? <laughs> All right, buck buck in the chat if you want to see John wrestle his wife. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll make it a tier, but we'll have to it'll have to be a high up tier. There's going to be a lot of tears, baby. <laughs> Fuck, are these people saying buck buck because they want to see <laughs> yeah, they you, to see you get your ass beat? <laughs> they want to see the crackhead beat you to death with a pipe, and they want to see your wife wrestle you. Oh, my God. I thought these guys were my fucking friends. All right. Fine. We'll fucking put it on. Subscribe to or follow Instagram, Little Stinkers, <laughs> and we'll live it this week. I'll find that bitch. She chills under the L in front of Gerard. Uh, I might see that bitch tonight. Dude, you better give her that L. Damn, I need a weapon. <laughs> I cannot rest losing Can we possibly bring her on To mediate your differences Who? Your crackhead To mediate whose differences You obviously oh, have a beef with her She's not gonna me- she- You wanna mediate us I get it Yeah yeah I'll try to book her Okay <laughs> I'll, I'll get her availability tonight As I'm getting my ass whipped by her <laughs> We'll leave a little crack trail. Crack trail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the second murder occurs January 23rd, 1978. And this one is especially fucked up. Breaks into a house. There's a woman that, that's three months pregnant there. And uh, I'll spare you some of the most fucked up details. But he does to this woman what he was known for doing to animals. Jesus Christ. Rice, dude. Yeah, it's that fucking. What bad. are you sparing me? Did he like eat the unborn, like through the stomach? He did cut her open, and like he was bathing in her blood. Oh my god! Yeah, it's, dude, it's it's fucked, man. So this woman's husband. This happened during the day, and this woman's husband comes home at six o'clock at night. He was on a business trip, and the reason why he took so long is because his truck broke down on the way home. And he eventually made it back home. He comes in. He sees the dog just like sitting there off to the side. So they have a German Shepherd. The dog's sitting there. He sees a trash bag sitting in the middle of the floor. The stereo's on. And he sees spots on the floor, but it's dark, so he just thinks it's related to the trash. Mm -hmm. And as he gets closer, he sees that his wife's torso is ripped open and her intestines are out. So she she was... shot and she was also cut open did the did she die from the gunshot first before I don't know he did the rest where did he put the dog when this did he get the dog in a different room or some shit this is something that's especially fucked up too and I feel like I'm saying this a lot but when he eventually goes to trial when Richard Chase goes to trial this woman's husband his name's David Wallen He's in the courtroom, and fucking Richard Chase's mother approaches him and says, why didn't your dog protect you? Well, okay, yeah, she's nuts pie. The lady's fucking... You say nuts pie? Yeah. I've never heard that. I think it was just a nickname for a neighborhood guy back in the day. Oh, that's sweet. He had a rancher house, and he was too crazy for stairs. We called him nuts pie. Oh, God, that's so cute. (laughs) You don't think your crackhead's nuts pie? Um, yeah, yeah. Or she crack she's, pie. She's, she's known in the neighborhood as Nuts Pie. Oh, <laughs> That's so cute. Um, all right. So, yeah, that's the craziest thing you could ever say to a victim's family. Truly you know, insane. That guy's a victim. Uh, what did he... Did he fucking choke her out? Like... No, I mean, I... I it he, is the first question that I asked, though. <laughs> like, where was that fucking dog at? Yeah, I, I think he reacted the way most people would react to it. But that guy... Fortunately, that guy ended up leaving a... A pretty productive life. Um, by all, he, he ends up having a family. He has a, at least a daughter. I don't know how many kids he ended up having. So, um, leads a very productive life. That's in good. light of what happened, because it's easy. To, I don't know. I don't know how you come back from something like yeah. that. But you know, thankfully, he had a lot of good things go his way after that. So he obviously there's four more murders. So he doesn't even get questioned for this. Dude gets away. Well. Oh, wait. I will add this because this even adds to how fucked up it was. But before he leaves the scene, he goes out to the yard and he gets dog shit. Then he comes back in and jams it down the throat of this woman's body. Now that's overboard, buddy. 
That's too much. You're very close to getting another hiss. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I took one back, so this would only be your second hiss. <laughs> so let me give it to you. <laughs> the third hiss, I got to kick you out. You got to give one to the camera at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, here's one for you too, motherfucker. <laughs> Tired of fucking bailing you out just because you get caught in these Chick Fil A traps, but dude, so the final four murders they happen on January twenty seventh. One day, yeah, before in a day, he he breaks into this house and this woman, she would um I think she was taking care of maybe like a nephew and I think she might have been babysitting another child from the neighborhood. So this woman named uh, Evelyn Miroth is home. She's there with a friend named Danny Meredith. And Evelyn is, she's 38, and I think Danny's around the same age. So she's taking a bath, and she has Danny watch the kids while she's in the bathroom. And during that time, fucking Richard Chase breaks into the house. And I think he kills Danny Meredith first, and then there's a six-year-old boy who he kills, and a 22-month-old baby that he kills before going into the bathroom and shooting uh, Evelyn in the tub. He uses a gun on everybody? I, I th- well, all right, so he uses a gun, but then he ends up taking the 22 months old body with him. Are you laughing, Danny? No. Oh, my God. I didn't hear him laughing. Oh, all right. <laughs> why would we laugh at that? I don't know. That's why I asked. This is one of the few somber moments we have on the podcast. <laughs> It always gets ruined. <laughs> Hand me that dunce cap, please. <laughs> he gets caught that night? I mean, this is like... No. Dude, he's not arrested for five fucking days. And he doesn't leave town. He does not leave town. Um, I've seen it described in both this case in regards to the woman who was killed in the bathtub and then the previous murder that... He raped the corpse, but again, like I don't know if if they mean that he sexually assaulted the, the corpse, but was unable to achieve erection. If they're still counting that. What corpse are you talking about? All right, the second killing, and then the corpse of the woman in the bathtub. Okay. So in both cases, it's what happens there is described as rape. But we had mentioned earlier that he's had impotence issues. Yeah. So he at least tries. All right, so we'll leave it at that. I I never fucking hear about any of this. I guess I just don't uh, well, watch the documentaries. I can't hold it it's against the most bro. fucking disturbing shit you could ever learn about. Bro, I've been alive for centuries, so you know I hear about <laughs> I hear about so much that the average person doesn't hear about. <laughs> yeah, you must have real, a real. Uh, yeah, I, I got a I got an eye for this stuff. <laughs> So, dude, he, uh, all right, so he kills four people in this one night. Um, it's broken up, so the attack is broken up. He, everybody's already dead at this point, but he's going around, and he's doing the shit that he would do to the animals there. So he was at least, like, I heard it was, he bit into the baby's head because part of the kid's brain was still there. You follow me? After he shot the kid in the head? Yes. All right. So they found part of the uh, the brain matter there. So they knew even though he took the baby, that at this point the baby had to have been dead. All right. So takes it with him. And five days later, he approaches a woman at a local, um, local, sh- local shopping mall. And he approaches her and he recognizes her from high school. But instead of saying like, uh, like hey, did you go to so-and-so? I, I think I went to school with you. He walks up to her and he says, were you on the motorcycle with Kurt when he was killed that night? Now, back in high school, this woman's boyfriend, Kurt, was killed in a motorcycle accident. Yeah. So this poor lady's just fucking like soap shopping. Yeah. And this dickhead walks up and instantly reminds her of her dead boyfriend. So she says no, and she instantly recognizes who it is. So he's got blood all over his jacket, too. And at this point, there's like a manhunt. So his wanted ads are all over the fucking place, and he know, and she knows that, like, okay, this is fucking Richard Chase, and as soon as she's able to get away from him, she does, and she calls the police. She's like, yeah, this is Richard Chase that 
fucking approach me, and I think he's the guy. Yeah, he's shopping. Know, in yeah, downtown he's hanging Sacramento. out down here. Yeah. yeah. So they they go to his apartment and they go in, and his apartment is just as fucked up as you would imagine. There's just blood everywhere. There's, I think that's where they find the little boy's corpse, and there's just rotting shit everywhere. Animals and yeah, body all the animals that he was buying off the fucking they out of the newspapers. The yeah. Jesus, man. They charge him with six counts of first-degree murder, and that's in 1979. In May of 1979, he's found guilty. But this was surprising. He was found legally sane. Well, is that just to make sure he does real time? I don't know, because we've had somebody, I think it was, I can't remember which one it was, but it was within the past month where somebody was uh, declared legally insane. Mm-hmm. But they but still, still had to go to jail. Jail, yeah, yeah. You gotta figure for the degree of heinousness mm-hmm. there was. That it's like crazy or not. It's like we're not putting him in a fucking mental institution. He's sure. going to this guy's going to get hard one way or another, <laughs> and it's going to be with a wiener in his body. He's going to finally figure out what what gets him off. <laughs> Actually, that sounds too pleasant. You would make a great prison guard. Anybody ever told you that? <laughs> Your prison intake guard describing how the wiener in the butt process is going to go. <laughs> now, John, me Just as delousing somebody, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Honestly, you know, it might work out sexually for you, and you know, in the long run, a lot of guys like the prostate pressed upon, and uh, yours will be pressed upon, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I guarantee that. Turn around. <laughs> oh, damn. That's enough to keep me out of jail, man. <laughs> I never want to... Actually, no, I take that back. I do want to do weekends. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? It would be fun. As long as... I'm doing the fucking... Oh. I didn't say I'm fucking you. Not... We're not fucking each other. I'm not going to fuck my friend in jail. I could fuck you here. <laughs> <laughs> you go to jail to fuck guys you don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I, I just instantly went to you pulling my cape. <laughs> it scared me, man. Jake, please come back soon. <laughs> Jake, we miss you. Oh, uh, dude. So, wait. So, he's declared legally sane, and he's sentenced to death in San Quentin. All right? Uh, and then how long does that take? That can be years, right? With appeals and shit? Do they even bother doing that? Well, dude, get this. So, this is May of 1979, May of 1979 where he's sentenced to death. The day after Christmas, 1980, he's found dead in his cell. Hmm. By his own hand or uh, the, the official explanation is that he was saving all of his, uh, um, his, uh, his pills. He was saving all of his pills and then uh, eventually like, took, took them all, them all at once. once. But there are people that think that he might have had a little help. Uh, wanted help? Either killing himself or, or murdering him. him. Yeah. yeah. Now, there were prisoners. Apparently, there were a lot of prisoners in there that were, like, encouraging him to kill himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd have to imagine that, like, somebody's just going to take the initiative and fucking kill him. You know, half those dudes are probably in for life anyway. Mm -hmm. I hope he got, well, it seems like he got off easy if he just overdosed on pills. Yeah, it would have been cool, though, if they had, like, a dog come in and just fuck him. (laughs) Yeah, that would fucking rock. (laughs) (laughs) Brought in, like, a bad dog from the pound. He's I got no chance need, of ever getting out. We need more unreasonable uh, with dog fuckings. Yeah, I think we should use torture. I'm with you. Yeah. What are some things that you think would uh, would bring about a dog fucking? Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just talking about uh, torture. You think what would be the crime that the punishment would be? We're bringing in a I Rottweiler. Think, I think it would have been. Fuck you. I think it would have been appropriate. To open Richard Chase's cell and send in a sexually ravenous pit bull. Um, I think a, a couple. Let's throw a couple in there. <gasps> let them take turns. Oh my god! But I don't think getting fucked by a dog would be nearly as painful as getting fucked by a, a human male. Buddy, you're getting bit the entire time too. Hopefully, <laughs> I'd rather they. <laughs> I'd rather they like cover him meat and peanut butter and like let dogs eat his genitalia (laughs) that would be ideal do you think like while you're getting fucked by a dog like at any point you're just telling him to go lay down (laughs) (laughs) or you start liking it and you're like and stay (laughs) good boy (laughs) 
<laughs> no, for real. How dog is a, how big is a dog's dick? <laughs> uh, didn't what, what, wasn't there like a fucking pit bull picture going around? But was that just a big set of balls that he had? <laughs> Did you guys see that? It's like one of those fucking Mr. Worldwide Pitbull or cock diesel looking uh, uh, pitbulls, and he just had a giant set of fucking balls. I don't know. So I feel like even like a dog's big dog's dick is still always inside until it comes out, right? That sounds right, man. I don't. Yeah, I'm no um, scientist, but maybe I will be one day. <laughs> <laughs> I might be on my way. Yeah, you should uh, declare yourself a dog dick expert. <laughs> Nobody's going to refute that. <laughs> Let's go buck buck in the chat if you want to see John declare himself a dog dick expert. Yeah, I'm going to uh, change my Twitter bio tonight. <laughs> um, where were we? Um, Do dogs have big dicks? I think was the last question <laughs> yeah, you asked. Asking today. all the hard-hitting questions tonight. <laughs> Does anybody have a recollection of a gigantic dog dick that they've seen? If you do, hit us with it in the chat. If you could describe it in as many words as possible, that would be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get a penny per word on this. So, <laughs> <laughs> we had a cat when I was a kid <gasps> that um, my mom told us was a lady cat, and then one day it was like sitting on the couch like this, and it was rock hard, baby. Um, just like kind of like a dog dick, red lipstick style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're always just inside unless it's unless it's in the. We mood. had never seen his penis until yeah. that day. As you just always thought it was a girl, for real? Yeah, we called we called her baby, but then when we saw he had a penis, we still called him baby. Yeah, you can't change his name. He's still a baby to me. <laughs> <laughs> you can always be my baby now. How big that dick get? <laughs> what that dick do, baby? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you shouldn't have two cats. <laughs> Should be a limit. All right, let me try with one. Let's see how good I do with that one. <laughs> yeah, I think... Yeah, I think any kind of fucking serial killer should be tortured. All of them? I mean, yeah, of course. Where's the level of gruesomeness that you decide when the torture is appropriate? True. But a guy like that mm-hmm. should have had endured years of torture before he died. All right, so we got some dog dick chatter in the chat. Oh, great. Let's check it out. Lucas says, my wiener dog had a giant dick, then he died. <laughs> um, Stephen Hawking's asked a great question. Why do dog dicks get stuck in dog pussies? Are they barbed, or is that a duck penis? Cat penises are barbed. Are they? Oh, yeah. So they get stuck. Oh, man. How cool is that, man? You got a barbed wire tattoo around your penis? Whoa. That's what they mean by that, right? You're talking about the movie cover of the Pamela Anderson movie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, how big is his dick? All right, what is Whitney, Wisconsin? Has all the info you need on dog dick. Uh, Mike Trainer, I'm going to trust you on that one, brother. <laughs> That sounds like a lady on the internet that fucks dogs. Uh-huh. Uh, Maple Hill Park says, my friend always had Mastiffs growing up, and I feel... Wh- oh, no, they deleted it. I, I was reading it. What the fuck? I, I want to hear about those Mastiff dicks. You better Come on. Tell us about the Mastiff dicks. Yeah, if you want to stay in this chat, you better hit us with that dog dick info. Damn, Mastiff dick just sounds like Massive dick, so they must uh, be yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, every picture of a Mastiff should have the word Brazzers written underneath it. <laughs> Yeah, dog fall, dog balls are scary. Dog balls are probably the inspiration for truck nuts. So that dude died after less than a year, and that interview happened in that meantime. Yes, it did. Okay. Yeah. Sorry to get back. That's oh, all right. Off the chat. You always take me back, baby. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. The, um, yeah, whoever fights monsters was the name of that book, and that was a pretty. They don't give like the entire transcript of the interview, but they give you enough info to give you some insight as to, yeah. you know, some things that might not have been reported upon. And that sounds like something too gruesome that they to make for fucking a television documentary yeah. or, or reenactment, yeah. right? They're not going to fucking make that. That's disgusting, dude. Like I said, though, this guy he was a handsome guy, so I'm surprised that you know some Hollywood stud wasn't begging for this role. <laughs> Incel of the year. <laughs> This has Jared Leto written all over it. <laughs> yeah, he would really. I don't know. That guy goes pretty method. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Maple Hill brings up uh, out of the blue, but it was definitely a big old stinky doggy. <laughs> 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 
Mike, what is John correct about that lovely lady? That she fucks or fucked. Oh, Whitney, dogs. Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh, is she a pretty lady? I don't want to know anything about her. How do you know then? I guessed. Uh, the topic was fucking dogs. <laughs> and one of the people said, this lady will tell you all you need to know about that. <laughs> and I put two and two together. Oh, man. I would love to know why she's named Whitney, Wisconsin. Mike, can you elaborate, brother? Well, you don't want to uh, use your family computer to look it up? <laughs> <laughs> Danny, can you use John's phone to look that up, please? I got to wait for the Apple store to open up tomorrow to fucking Google that. <laughs> wow, man. You learn something new every day. You do. Oh, man. Corey Merle says she was a thick slam pig, Mike. <laughs> I don't want to know more about her. I love those words. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more, Corey. <laughs> oh, man. I want to put that in my porn up search tonight. Not Whitney, oh. Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Thick slam pig. Man, that's something. Did this lady just... Do you think she just fucked a dog once? Or do you think no. she, she made a habit of it? Buddy, you don't have a... Uh... A singular dog fucking episode. You don't think it's a lifestyle? It's like it's like a salt, it's salt life. life. <laughs> <laughs> it's peanut butter life. <laughs> uh, Who's the guy that died from being fucked by a horse? Was it Mister Hands, or is that the name of the horse? I don't know, man. Tell me more. You about never this. heard about no, this? No, I haven't. Danny, is that something like you know about? I There's. I don't know who was who. I don't know if the horse was Mister. But that's the yeah. the story. Uh, and I think it was on video. Oh no! Fucked to death, I believe, by a horse. <laughs> um, and I wonder if you live, are you going to jail for that? Do you get in big time trouble, or the cops like, look, we can't have you. <laughs> you gotta serve a couple <laughs> years for that one. That's tough, man. Cause can't you? I can't. Why isn't Whitney Wisconsin in jail? She should probably. Isn't that? I don't Animal know, maybe abuse. the line is drawn if you're getting They're fucked by the dog. The yeah. Who's pushing? That's all. There's got to be a Supreme Court case about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Rut Row versus Wade. <laughs> Hopefully that ne never gets overturned. <laughs> Oh, man. God, that's got to be the worst. If you're, when you realize, like, all right, you're getting fucked by a horse, all right, and you realize it's going so badly that, that you're, you're not like, going to make it, you're just like, please tell me this is not the way that I am found. I don't know, man. I feel like if you were there in the first place, you're not going to be that ashamed of <laughs> your body being discovered. Dude, what if it's like, way. what if it's like a guy that that's how he cheats on his wife? It's not with other women. It's just with horses. And it's like his last thoughts are his wife finding out that he's into getting plowed by horses. Uh, something tells me that was not the case for this fella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb. I Wait, isn't that a, that's like the, isn't that like the Tijuana donkey show? Don't it is. Yeah. So those girls, is it just cause it's that man didn't stretch his anus out enough? Is the reason? I, or maybe I, it was too. Maybe donkey dicks are smaller than Mister Hand's dick. Oh, buddy, I don't know. This is a great question. This is these are all great questions that I never want the answers to. I mean, these are all clearly in the Supreme Court opinions. If you Google Rut Row versus Wade, <laughs> so you'll find everything you need there. Okay, we got some um, some people who some for some reason know the laws of. She's dead. Animals. Oh my god! Wait, Wisconsin is. It seems to be. Corey, are you referring to Whitney Wisconsin being dead? Because my heart's going to be broken if that oh, is. Oh, she did get arrested. Um, having sex with animals is only uh. illegal in specific states. So, much like an abortion, you take a quick trip to uh, <laughs> New Jersey, <laughs> and you can fuck any animal you want, it sounds like. That's what the Pine Barrens are for. Oh, my God, John. Her real name is Amy Lou. Oh my God, no! She got arrested for making sex tapes in public. Okay, I, you know I love Michael Trainer for a lot of reasons, but one of them is that I know he's using his computer to look all this stuff up right now. <laughs> Mike, you are the realest brother. 
Yeah, shout out to Mike's <laughs> VPN. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Corey. Yeah, that confirms it. She's happy birthday in heaven to Whitney, Wisconsin. Happy birthday in heaven, you twisted bitch. Up in heaven right now with a uh, beautiful <laughs> Pegasus. <laughs> Sounds like a little uh, mini stinker. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Danny says uh, she'd make a great mini stinker. I, I agree, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stevie Hawking says white women fuck dogs. That, this is a very white crime. Yeah, I mean, fucking, I feel like non-white people don't even let their dogs inside. <laughs> like they got fucking kennels. Uh oh, I think we got another dog fucker name in the chat. So Lucas says, shout out Rusty Cage. <laughs> Wait, Rusty is a woman's name? I don't like that. Oh, no. Yeah, that, that is a rough bitch if her name is Rusty. <laughs> that is a lady who has 10 years of Sturgis t shirts in her closet. <laughs> Buddy, please tell me that's not a lady's name. Actually, no, I prefer it be a lady's name. I don't want to find out any men are into this. Yeah, how did how did we um, get all the way here? I don't even know, man, dude. Every every week, like the end the, of the, the spin podcast, off of uh, yeah, the downward spiral of it just ends up being about my perversions. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, um, Katie hit us with Amy Lude. Is uh is the makeup hot? No, it actually feels great, dude. I bought a wig, too. Because you've been wet this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling to keep it out of my contacts. Oh, so I'm, man. I'm just grateful that I've been able to to manage that. Um, before I go any further, I just want to give a shout-out to Dude Duderson in the chat who says, Rough bitch. Uh, oh, I thought you were making that poem when you said it. No, love it, dude. <laughs> but, um, no, it, it is not hot. Um I am just naturally wet, and I bought a wig to wear, but that was too hot. What was the wig like? Kind of fucked up. What's Dracula hair like? Slick back. Uh, this, this looked more Eddie Munster shit. This looked more like uh, Chaz Palminteri's hair, so I chose not to wear it. What's that like? More pompadour? Yeah, up? pompadour. A little gr- little uh, gray streak in it. Uh, oh, a a um, gentleman, a stately Dracula. If if I had paid a little bit extra money to get like a nice looking wig, it would have been. Good to wear. I wish you would have worn the wig anyway. Uh, no, it was... I don't know. There's always next week. There is. I got an, I got a haircut this week, too, so I wanted to show yeah, it off. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I turned into a real motherfucker when I don't get a haircut. I went two weeks with that one. That seems like the normal amount of time. Buddy, I, I have this weird thing where when my hair starts touching my ears, it's all I think about. Can't you just get a razor at home and cut around the ear? How big of a dickhead would I look like if I just had razor marks around my ear? No, like how I have my sideburns. You just do a little clip up. All right, hand me that dunce cap again. For me or for you? Both of us. <laughs> <laughs> we can't share it. Yeah, I probably could do that, but I like going to Rick. All right, summertime, though, your hair grows a little bit faster, so you more oh, does frequently. It? I think so. Oh, okay. Uh, do you find yourself getting your haircut more often in the summer? Um, do you find no, yourself getting really. ang- angry or faster? About your hair touching your ears. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's how I should phrase it. Yeah, I am uh I am not doing well mentally, so that adds to it. <laughs> <laughs> to see a man in full Dracula makeup <laughs> smiling ear to ear, talking about how unwell he is mentally <laughs> is, is probably gonna be the clip for this episode. <laughs> Mike, you look happy to me, pal. You got me fucked up, man. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling better. <laughs> I really have had a tough three weeks, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think it's starting to turn around. Uh, Corey, I had a blast in Cleveland. I can't wait to go back. Dude, fucking Hilarities Cleveland is the nicest club I have ever been to. Nice. Dude, it's it's not only like the nicest, um, the nicest club, but it just looks cooler than any other fucking place I've been to. Hell yeah. It looks like the... Well, especially the... The smaller room. The big room looks like the fucking Bat Cave, which is incredible. That's sick. But, dude, the smaller room looks like what your bedroom would look like if you won, like, a cocaine settlement. Is that the room that you guys had, like, to yourself as a green room, basically? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Neon everywhere. Just the coolest shit, man. <laughs> is it, like, the downtown area? Like, walkable to yeah. all the other... Oh, yeah. It's right in the middle of downtown. That's sick. Yep. Yeah, so, Corey, I would love to come back to Cleveland. I, I think... 
Um, I th- I think once we hit 2023, we're going to hit the road again. And we're going to start... We're doing little stinker shows. I wish I had the fucking exact date down. But in November of this year, we're going to be at Helium Philly doing a live little stinkers. And we'll figure it out. We'll hit the road and do a bunch of shows. And then also, I want to keep coming out to... Um, yeah, Tim and I, and there might be one other special guest coming along with us for our shows. So, but yeah, we will be hitting the road again soon. And Cleveland is definitely on that stop. Fuck yeah, dude! Cleveland rocks. It does, man. I really want to go to Pittsburgh too. Yeah, I hear Pittsburgh's great. I went there once. I didn't have the best time when I was there, but I know if I went back, I would enjoy it. I went there as a as a youth. But I think just to see a Pirates game, and then okay. we went back to Wheeling, West Virginia. Oh. Quick little day trip. Yeah. I went to see Corn when I went to Pittsburgh. That seems like one of the places you should see Corn. Yeah, it was An cool. industrial city. It was odd. When, uh, when he shouted us out, he's like, Pittsburgh, what's up? I didn't feel compelled to like raise my hand up because I'm not from there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. I think it's based on where you're from, mm-hmm. not your geographic location at the time of the shout out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was at the Igloo, the place where the Penguins used to play. Cool old venue. Reminded me a lot of uh, the Spectrum, just the rundown yeah. shithole, but it was cool because of that. Did they still play there at the time of, yeah. the, of the concert? Yep. Yeah. Tampa, hell yeah. Where's Tampa? West West coast of Florida, baby. Uh, like latitudinally near Orlando? No, north Orlando is central, and Tampa's further north. I don't fucking know, dude. It's Florida seems like it should be not that long of a drive, like to a lot of the cities, but it's like Miami to fucking Jacksonville is like a ten-hour drive or something oh, wow, like that. Damn. Maybe I didn't know that. It's crazy long. It's a I long ass, Tampa, a long ass, penis-shaped state. I love Florida, so you're about to get another hiss, brother. <laughs> I right. love, dude. I, I love I Orlando. That. I love Orlando, and I love Tampa, Clearwater, St. Pete, that whole area. Have you been to all those cities again? Off of perks, you still like it that much? Yeah, dude. I went uh, last summer. I took my family to Clearwater, and I think like five years prior to that, my wife and I went to Clearwater, St. Pete, and Tampa. We went to the Dolly Museum, which was very cool. Salvador Dolly or uh, no ba- Dolly Parton <laughs> All right, I think I think we're through with the questions for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna have a fucking man in f- shitty Dracula makeup <laughs> calling me out. <clears throat> oh, Kate, I would love to come to Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta seems like a. You guys haven't been there yet, have you? No. no. Yeah, it seems like a place where. We should. I would love that. Dude, there's there's have not a place fans. where I can't think of that I wouldn't want to go and have fun. Yeah, I'm down. Every place has been fun so far. I'm just chilling with my buddies. Yeah, yuck, if you're, if you're with your up. boys, mm-hmm. it's going to be fun as hell. Dude, I was thinking about that last night. I mentioned I went to go see the Elvis movie, and chicks were losing their goddamn minds for the king. It's been out for three weeks. I know, buddy. The theater's still fucking full of wet clam. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches are still sliding off their seats three weeks into Baz yeah, Lerman's Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Baz Lerman says like the last thing you say at a field sobriety checkpoint before you get put in handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you coming from? Yeah, fucking Baz, Baz Lerman. Lerman. <laughs> fucking you know. You boop the cop and <laughs> <right in> the <laughs> boop. <laughs> Dude, just imagine getting shot by a cop just for booping. <laughs> <laughs> Will they get you for that? He's going to boop. <laughs> Put your boop down. Yeah. He's a cop testifying in court like uh, I saw him making a distinct booping motion. <laughs> and uh, I immediately felt as though my nose was in danger. <laughs> I had just seen him take his nephew's nose and I did not want to be next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, but going back to Elvis, dude. Uh, just everything about the movie was great. Really, really fucking cool. It's not what I expected. 
Uh, but one of the things that stood out was like just how wild the ladies were for the king. In the movie or in the theater? D- dickhead, what do you think? I don't know. Do you think ladies are losing their fucking minds at movie theaters over a fake Elvis? I, that's what I thought you were saying at first. No, what I'm saying is watching, I guess, the actresses react to fake <laughs> Elvis and thinking about the reaction that he got at any time he appeared in public. Yeah, okay. Just chicks it. losing their mind and throwing their underwear at him. Really? Yeah. Damn. I thought it would be cool if, like, I immediately pictured, like, doing shows again and, like, being that our crowds are, like, 99% just farted middle-aged in males, underwear. Just moderately shitted in <laughs> size 44 <laughs> yeah. boxer briefs being thrown on, on fucking yeah. stage. Yeah, I was going to wear these for another eight years, but now I want you to have them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my dream, baby. Oh, yeah. uh, dude, Michael Trainer. Hit, Michael Trainer hit us with the Rodney King boopings. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's reenact the Rodney King video where it's just boops. I don't think we should do that. I don't even think we should say that. I don't even think you should have read that. It's crazy Uh, how white my thighs are. Get a good look at them, baby. They ain't getting any sun this year. It's too damn hot out. Maybe I'll go uh, tanning. That would be so funny. I got really tan. Yeah. (laughs) Just looking like, who's the fucking, who's that tan guy that was like famous for just being on boats uh dan bilzerian nah it was like a f- from the 70s maybe i don't even know if he's an actor or just like a, a lifestyle guru kind of okay. a guy kennedy not george kennedy that's the guy from lethal weapon <laughs> um, uh, anybody in the chat we'll do no, another 20 minutes is, talking about this guy that we don't know it is a george you right you, you i know yes skinny Picture him in like a fucking navy blazer with brass buttons. My and bad. A white Wait, polo is it shirt. Ricardo Montalban? Is he white? Yeah. Maybe. Does he have curlyish hair? Uh, he's not white, but he wouldn't exactly get booped by the police. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that means. At this point, dude, I'm so lost in this metaphor. <laughs> Katie, you are insane. Katie says, uh, "Can you scroll up, Dan?" Because. I- it just popped up, but she says you got to be a special kind of something to still be attracted to Elvis. A broken, my God. I think she means these days. Like if I, there dude. were women in the theater being like, woo, you know. Well, this guy, the guy who played him, Austin, whatever, is super hot. Mm. But then. Oh, that's right. I remember, like after the movie, I went and looked at some of Elvis stuff, and he's a beautiful guy. Yeah, I saw something recently where I was like, oh, yeah, he was. I feel like Elvis was on every fucking commercial on cable mm-hmm. in like the nineties. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was still the man for because like every time they released, oh, uh, the greatest hits are on CD now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It'd be like a fucking year worth of uh, campaigns to sell that shit. And just yeah. like, okay, yeah, there's still a huge fan base. But I kind of feel like this movie was a little bit <laughs> late. Uh, Lucas just called me Retardo Montalban. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're talking. George Hamilton. All right. Thank there you. you. Go, yeah. Did we say, did we agree on George? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, but then I. Is that who you were thinking of, though? It was, but I confidently changed my answer to Ricardo Montalban. You were, con- you were confident, but especially you're right, after we George. both had agreed on George. Thank you, Michael Bees, to. Uh, Robert Evans was another one, man. That's not who I'm thinking of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, I. <laughs> I did love Karate Elvis too. Like he does karate at like ten different points in this movie. Is that when he's like fat? Some karate when he's fat, but he's he's doing he was karate doing it before fat. Yeah. What made him get fat? Just getting drunk and drugged. And I think a combination of just depression and pills and and how many years a lot. was he like uh, fat Elvis? Less uh, than five. I don't know for sure, but yeah, I, I would say that he was like what fifty when he died. Less than that. I don't know, dude. Well, I don't think he lived to the, into the eighties. Did they fucking did you learn anything well, dude, during this the movie? Deal. They cut it off before he gets like especially fat. Yeah, there just comes a point. I don't want to ruin it for people. It's going to be on fucking HBO Max. It's in four a days. real person. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that does capital a historical <laughs> event, dude. John, I don't want to spoil cap- the end of Saving Private Ryan for you. <laughs> All right, so the end of Saving Private Presley is as follows. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they um, they show a meeting between he and Priscilla in a um, a limo. She's trying to get him to go to rehab 
because she realizes he's not going to make it out because he's being manipulated and he's kind of locked into doing these shows he doesn't want to do because his manager fucking robbed him blind. Real? Oh, what? He was like trying to recoup money in his final years? It was fucked up. So the guy, the guy took over 50% from him. Damn. And his manager was a de- degenerate gambler and kept him essentially in an indentured servitude contract where he had to keep performing do the, all these shows he didn't want to do just to pay off his own personal debts. Jesus. Yeah, it was fucked. It's especially sad. I mean, I feel like he didn't have to... Oh, like even from record contracts, all the money from everything he was taking. Yeah, well, he was having him do like... Uh, he really pimped him out. Like he was having him do movies he didn't want to do. He was mm-hmm. having him do like fucking commercials and all kinds of But I feel like if he shit. broke that relationship off, couldn't he just have lived off his um, radio play? And like... I don't know, man. I feel like that would have... Um, just blew Christmas. Like doesn't the fucking person that sings like uh like mariah carey's um christmas song like she gets million dollars worth of fucking uh checks from that every year that song gets my dad harder than anything jesus christ all right (laughs) we have officially done one minute too long (laughs) what the fuck man dude i one i want you to meet my dad and two i want you to see the way he acts when that mariah carey song comes on yeah i can't wait to see how hard he gets during it Actually, dude, he might he might have he might be suffering from Richard Chase disease, because uh, I went over there one day and he is hot and heavy for a local weather lady, uh, Cecily Tynan. Who isn't? All right, so yeah. you're on my dad's side now. Yes. So there was one time where I think she got hurt running, and they mentioned on the newscast that she was going to be out a while with a uh, medical issue. And my dad yells out, "Oh my God! Do you need a? If she needs an organ donation, I'd be happy to donate." And my mom from the kitchen yelled out, why don't you give her the organ that doesn't work anymore? Damn. Yeah, fried his ass. Yep. Fuck. Was he, uh, was he making a wiener joke at the time? My dad? Yeah. Or was he sincerely no, willing I think to give her a kidney? Sin- he's, he's the nicest guy in the world. Well, I don't think he would give Monica Malpass a fucking kidney. A friend of, a friend of ours fucked Monica I know she Malpass. was, uh, she's was too hot for me to say. It's hard to think of a, a, a butt-ugly newscaster, you know? <laughs> Who would you go with? They're all pretty hot. I don't want to disparage the name of any of my uh, my 6ABC local uh, correspondents. Vernon Odom? Would you suck his Vernon dick? Vernon my favorite fucking of all. No way. Yeah, I used to watch Visions 6 oh, o'clock on Saturdays. Baby. That was my shit. Man. Man, we're still on. Yeah, we should not be. <laughs> we're talking about fucking Vernon Odom. We're done, right? <laughs> Oh man, What's, dude, I, you will fucking do this until the last person leaves the chat, won't you? <laughs> One night we should do that. We should do a marathon, little stinkers, just to see how long we can podcast. No, for. people will fucking get some. They'll fucking let their cat walk on their keyboard while they sleep. <laughs> just keep us here all night. Well, dude, what if we do it like uh, one of those like uh, high school prom things where you get locked in? <laughs> Where, like, people can't get into the chat at a certain point. You can only leave. Uh-huh. So it's kind of like a, a prom lock-in. No, you can't leave at the lock-in. I understand that. But you're switching the rules of the lock-in, therefore making it no longer a it's lock-in. It's my fucking prom. I'm going to do what I want to. <laughs> all right? But, yeah, maybe we could set it, like, all right, 100 people get in, and uh, we podcast so there's nobody left in the chat. Have you ever shop- chaperoned a ch- uh, one of your children's proms? No. Will you dress like that if you ever do? I will. <laughs> One hundred percent. The theme under the sea. <laughs> uh, 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 Shaftikus says Bing Crosby gets his dad jazzed up to bust his mom's cheeks out. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, we got to do that. Yeah, yeah, we'll set it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chat, this has been a blast. I love you guys so much. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. This is yeah, fun. Listen, I cho- I totally dropped the ball the last couple of weeks. I meant to mention this earlier, but I fucking dropped the ball, and I appreciate you guys coming on such short notice. Yeah, we had our diehards in here. This you was guys great, are the man. best. Yeah, you guys are the best. And uh, If you know anything about where Jake is, please let me know. I don't trust this motherfucker as far as I can throw him. Though, if you turn into a bat, I could probably throw him pretty far. <laughs> <sighs> Fuck me. Are we still alive? <laughs> All right, chat. I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time. Bye.